Good morning, everyone. It's June 23rd, 2011, and I wanted to follow up on my two previous videos regarding my belief that we're headed towards a war in Syria, most likely because of an impending false flag attack somewhere in the United States. Okay, as many of you already know, the president's announced that he's going to begin pulling troops out of Afghanistan. On the surface, that seems like a good thing, but I'd caution against any celebrating yet because, in my humble opinion, it's all smoke and mirrors. I want to state that, yeah, I believe, you know, I believe he's going to pull the troops out of Afghanistan, but are they coming home? Probably not. Keep in mind the phrase coming home is just a buzzword for an end of hostilities in one nation. But he never said we were going to end our commitments in Libya. And he never said a thing about the situation in Syria, which is escalating. Um, in fact, you can see, according to this Yahoo News article, strange it's coming out on Yahoo!, that Syrian troops have pushed to the Turkish border Thursday in their sweep against a three-month-old pro-democracy movement, sending panicked refugees, including children, rushing across the border to safe havens in Turkey. Okay, so we're starting to see this. It's This is something that could really escalate. Okay. I also believe that while he'll move some of the 33,000 surge troops out of Afghanistan, he's just going to move them to other places where we might see ground wars like in Syria start happening. Okay, now keep that 33,000 surge troops number in mind here because it's going to come up. Um, remember, we're hearing all sorts of rumors about troops getting ready for deployment to the Middle East. Here's a little summary of some of the information from the InfoWars website. Um, InfoWars.com has received alarming reports from within the ranks of military stationed at Fort Hood, Texas, confirming plans to initiate a full-scale U.S.-led ground invasion of Libya and deploy troops by October. Okay, he's talking about Libya here, but it... You know, given some of the other stuff I've just seen about Syrian troops along the Turkish border, it might change. And plus, we've got amphibious groups over there off the coast of Syria, so you really want to watch that. Um, the source also stated that additional special forces troops are headed to Libya in July with a cavalry d a division, which is heavy armor and three corps deploying in late October and early November. Initial numbers are estimated at 12,000 active forces and another 15,000 in support, totaling nearly 30,000 troops. Now remember people, Obama last night said he was gonna move out some 33,000 troops out of Afghanistan. Okay, that's the surge troops. Now, this article says it's going to be, the ground force is going to be about 30,000 troops. Hmm, so that gives you an idea of where these forces might be headed. All right, now we're also in the process of conducting two military exercises. As I mentioned in other my other videos, Operation Milled Fist, and Operation Eagle Horizon. Now, check this out. This is that CNN article headed to the beach, heads up for an invasion force. Um, let's see, to quote the CNN article, this exercise is designed to test the capability of every type of Marine Corps aircraft, including MV-22 Ospreys, FA-18 Hornets, and as well as some Navy ships and Air Force planes. Now, apparently, this is becoming an international exercise with other ships from, now I think, England and France. 
keep in mind that this is a massive operation that looks more like an invasion than a simple test of aircraft capabilities. Why bring ground forces and other equipment into play if you just wanted to find out what your aircraft were capable of? Doesn't make sense to me. Why make it a massive drill on the East Coast where there is no precedent for such an exercise? It's odd, you know. It seems to run counter to the president's desire to focus on efforts at home, efforts at home, unless, now this is just bald speculation on my part, the drill is more about preparing to repel an invasion force from some other country, you know, like Russia or maybe China. China, who has been saying that we're playing with fire by even involving ourselves with anything going on with Syria or all these drone attacks on Pakistan. Um, you know, it's just something to think about. You know, I might be reading too much into what he said, but, you know, maybe I'm not. Check this out. Okay, today, today, there's a meeting of the Committee on Foreign Affairs called Iran and Syria, The Next Steps. This full committee discussed various ways in which they might affect the uprisings in Syria and begin to foment change in Iran. Okay. Um, it's even been talked about on Yahoo. Let me read this to you. John Bolton, former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, sharply criticized the Obama administration's handling of the Middle East while testifying before the House Foreign Affairs Committee Thursday morning. He focused on Iran and Syria, laying out steps the United States should take to prevent two governments from acquiring nu the two governments from acquiring nuclear weapons. He also had strong words for current U.S. policy toward Israel. And America's disdain for Israel, its truest ally in the region, can hardly be comforting to those who have never enjoyed such close relations, Bolton said in his testimony. If this is how the U.S., the United States, now treats close friends, how will it treat mere allies of convenience when convenience disappears? He took a characteristically hard line with the committee, stressing the need to take advantage of a narrow window of opportunity to stop the Middle East from developing nuclear weapons. According to his prepared testimony, Bolton, who is now a fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, told the committee that Iran will reach nuclear weapons capability and much sooner than later. He offered dire predictions of, mil of nuclear proliferation in the Middle East. It won't, he said, stop with Syria or Iran. If Iran obtains nuclear weapons, then most certainly Saudi Arabia will do the same, as will Egypt, Turkey, and perhaps others. Um, he added that in five to ten years, the Middle East could contain half a dozen or more nuclear weapon sites, or states, sorry. You know, I find it pretty interesting that less than 24 hours after, after Obama is talking about focusing on nation building at home, we see this kind of committee that is obviously making the case for intervention of some sort in Syria and Iraq. Now, I've downloaded transcripts from this House committee meeting, and in part two, I'll take a look at what they said. Thanks for your time.